Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new feature here on the Chronicles of Aguna, the creatively named Harry Reacts. The short show in which we'll react to things outside of the world of Arsenal that somehow lead back to the Arsenal. In today's case, we are going to look back on that game up at Anfield where Liverpool defeated Chelsea by two goals to one. And we're going to talk Manchester City's controversial winner at Molyneux. How frustrating is that? We're going to look at how the league table has ended up for the Gunners. Where do we find ourselves after a disappointing defeat down on the South Coast? We're going to do all of that on this short edition of Harry Reacts. Thank you for joining me. Okay, guys, welcome along. Hope you're all good. Hope you're all having a uh, decent enough Sunday. Uh, I was going to say good Sunday, but it can't be a good Sunday because we all had a lousy Saturday evening and that has unfortunately spilled over into our Sunday evening where I'm just as miserable, just as frustrated, just as fed up and just as bloody annoyed, if I'm being completely honest with you. We've got a fair bit to get into. Uh, Harry Reacts, yes, is a really creative name. I know I really pushed the boat out. Um, trying to come up with something unique and original and all the rest of it, um, is going to be something where we put together 15 to 20 minute maximum pods where we'll be discussing sort of some of the other big games in the Premier League, some of the other big stories, always through an Arsenal lens, of course. And uh, yeah, it's just a way of us providing you a little bit more content. I hope you uh, enjoy it. Um, I hope you appreciate it. If you've got any feedback, if you don't like the format, if you want me to do something different, tweak it, whatever, do let me know. Um, hit me up via Patreon. Remember, you can support the podcast via patreon.com forward slash the Chronicles of a Guna. Right, let's start off by having a look at the Premier League table, okay? Because as I mentioned, Manchester City managed to find a 95th minute winner at Molyneux, which means that they took maximum points, even though it looked for a long period that they were gonna do they weren't gonna do that, and that we may have kind of got away with a bit of damage limitation after our disappointing result down on the south coast. Liverpool were given a decent enough game, to be fair, by Chelsea tonight. But, of course, they found a way to win as well. And that makes the league table look pretty unhealthy for the Arsenal at this stage. It is early in the season. I don't want to go too overboard on this. I don't want to go too big on it. I don't want to make a massive, huge thing of it. But if you look at the league table now, you've got Liverpool sitting pretty on 21 points at the top of the Premier League. Manchester City just a point behind them on 20 points in second place. And Arsenal down in third now, level on points with Aston Villa, uh, who also have 17 on the board and are in fourth place at the minute. And our goal difference isn't looking great at the minute either. Just plus seven. Manchester City have plus 10. Liverpool have plus 12. It's not looking great after this weekend. And when you think about the fact that we had some really difficult fixtures earlier on in the campaign, we managed to come through those relatively unscathed in terms of our league position. To have come through that, to have then played Leicester, Southampton and Bournemouth and find ourselves four points off the pace now, it's not a good look. Um, and it's a real blow to us. It's a weekend that I suspect we will be looking back on uh, later down the line and probably for quite some time now because it could be the weekend where we lost ground um, and if we're playing catch-up from now, you know, you got to feel like it's going to be tough for us to win this division and to win this league and I'm not saying write us off and I'm not saying that we should give up hope and I'm not saying anything like that. It is early days. There's still 30 Premier League uh, rounds of fixtures to go. But when you think about how relentless City have been over the years, when you think about um, how good Liverpool have looked at the start of the season, and I do think they've got a challenging period coming up now and it could look very different for them come the end of that run of fixtures. I just feel like if you're feeling a little bit deflated right now as an Arsenal fan, you're entitled to, is kind of what I want to say on this. Um, that's not to say write us off. That's not to say give up hope or anything like that. Um, it is way too early to throw in the towel or wave the white flag. But, if, like me, you're feeling a bit down in the dumps on this Sunday evening uh, slash Monday morning, depending on when you're watching or listening to this, I think you're you're entitled to. And I don't think you should let those people that, that go online and go, oh, come on, what's the matter with you being super negative and toxic? There are some toxic voices out there, I think, when it comes to Arsenal. I think there are some overly negative opinions floating around online. But as an Arsenal fan who lives and breathes it, as we all do, you're well within your rights to feel like you've been punched in the stomach this evening. When you look at that league table, 
I wasn't actually going to even record this tonight. I was going to do it tomorrow morning. I was going to do it bright and early on Monday morning. But when I finished watching the Liverpool-Chelsea game and they brought up the league table on the screen, that's when I felt the punch in the gut. And I thought, I've got to do this now um, while the emotion is raw and pure. Because tomorrow I'll probably be sensible and calm again and feel much... Uh, more positive about the uh, wider outlook, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah, that's where we are at the minute. A couple of other things, though, I do want to discuss. Um, we've got to start with that Bernardo Silva um, interference, if you like, uh, that we saw um, in the game against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Look, I chose deliberately not to watch that game. I've got a lot going on at the moment um, outside of work, and I'm trying to juggle quite a few things at the minute. Um, and I thought, rather than waste my entire day in front of the television, getting frustrated and angry and ending up ultimately disappointed when Manchester City go on and win the game, I thought what I'll do is I'll park that one. I won't even watch that one. I won't even listen to it on the radio. I'll crack on with all the things that I need to do. And I'll just check the score before Liverpool and Chelsea play. And I'll sort of time my finish to sit down and watch that and enjoy it, put my feet up, whatever. And... Um, and I got to about 88 minutes of the game and I hadn't watched a single kick of it. And I thought, mm, shall I put it on? I don't want to jinx it because at the minute the results going the way I want it to. So I didn't. But I happened to be on the phone to someone around about the 94th, 95th minute who goes, oh, no, they've scored. And then goes, oh, but don't worry, it's offside. And I thought, phew. And then about 10 minutes later, after I got off the phone, I looked at my uh, live score app and it said, Wolves won Manchester City too. And I was like, I thought it was offside. So I went to have a look at this. And of course, there's another controversial decision for us to get all annoyed and fired up about. Let's have a look at it. According to the VAR, according to the VAR, Bernardo Silva here, where he's standing right in front of the goalkeeper, is not blocking his eye line. He's not having an impact on the game. Wild. Absolutely wild. This thing about deciding whether or not someone is having an impact, whether you are in the goalkeeper's eye line or not, you being there, you being present, is causing the goalkeeper a problem because the goalkeeper has to think about your positioning in a way that if you weren't there, they simply wouldn't. So this idea that if you're not standing directly in his eye line um, with relation to where the ball's coming from, you're not interfering, is a complete nonsense. I'll tell you what I would like to see done with this rule, just to keep it all a lot simpler. If you're wide of the goalposts, if you're within the frame of the goal, I will say, then you're interfering with play. If you're wide of the frame of the goal, so to the left or to the right of it, then you can be deemed as not interfering. When you're inside the width of the goal, in the goal mouth. You are interfering with the game in some capacity, guys. Even if it's just the goalkeeper being aware of you and then thinking for a split, tiny little second, I've got to be wary of this guy. That is impacting their ability in the moment to make the right decision, to make the right call quickly and sharply and react in the right way. So I think if you're wide of the goalpost, I don't mind them looking at something like this and saying, you're not interfering with play. But when you're within the width of the goal, you are offside as far as I'm concerned. That's how it should be. I know that's not what the rule says. The rule leaves it open to interpretation, which is why we have problems like this, which is why we have inconsistencies like this. The introduction of VAR, guys, has changed our game. And because it's changed our game, I think we need to look at some of the rules and I think we need to adjust them and tweak them so that we have a rule book, if you like, or a law book, because referees get funny when you call them rules instead of laws, a law book that better reflects the modern game and the game that we are watching on a weekly basis, because this kind of stuff is driving me mad. That's not just one inconsistency that we've seen this weekend. I don't think this goal should stand, okay? That's my opinion. That's my view. I've explained why. But then, to make matters worse, you get stuff like this. You get stuff like this where, uh, for those of you that are listening, I'll explain. Um, I've got a screenshot of the Tosin situation in the uh, Liverpool-Chelsea game where a ball is played over the top of the Chelsea defence. Tosin commits a foul. 
bang on pretty much where William Saliba was yesterday. Yes, the covering defender's a bit closer in this instance. But the referee shows the yellow card and nobody, surprise, surprise, in the VAR room tells him, go over and have a look because that is the denying of a clear goal scoring opportunity. The distance between uh, the player and the goal is pretty much the same. In fact, in this instance, the attacker's in a more central position, which I would argue makes it more of a goal scoring opportunity. I guess what they've gone by here is the fact that they believe that there is sufficient and adequate cover. But then you get into this dangerous place, right? If you're the last man and you pull someone back who's about to race through on goal, it should be a red card. I was fine with Saliba being sent off. I said that on the main pod where we reacted to the Bournemouth game. You can go back and check that out, by the way. If you're watching us on YouTube, it is on the channel. If you're listening to us on audio, it is on the channel. So go and check it out on the channel, on the feed. Go and check it out. The full review of Bournemouth 2, Arsenal nil is there and available to you. But the same, you know, in the same game week, the following day, we get a very, very similar situation that is dealt with completely and totally differently. And I'll tell you what really wound me up about this, what really annoyed me, irritated me, got under my skin about this whole situation, right? The minute that Tosin pulls the attacker down, nobody on commentary or on the broadcast goes, oh, ho, ho, ho. What do we have here then? Similar situation to yesterday. Do you know what they all did? They went, oh, well, it's not the same as the Arsenal one before they've even had a look at it. Because they know. They know that the inconsistencies are so clear for everybody to see that their first instinct is to try and justify why the referee hasn't, um, in the end, taken the same action as what we saw at Arsenal. Now, the referee on the pitch, to be fair to him, um, shows a yellow card. The referee yesterday showed a yellow card. At least there's some consistency between what the officials on the field are doing. But it's off the field where you get the inconsistency and it's the people that nobody can see, that nobody can go and speak to, that nobody can go and get an explanation for, uh, from, I beg your pardon, that are making these big calls. In one instance, they've gone and they've asked, here you go, you can see the two situations here. Look, Ben White isn't much further uh, away from um, from coming across then the defender in the Liverpool-Chelsea scenario. The next defender back is probably about the same distance as I think that might be Gabriel, is it? What I'm saying here, guys, is that you've got two very, very similar incidents. The only difference is how big the gap is between the cover and defenders, but it's open to interpretation whether or not you believe that that, that distance is too great um, for the defender to get back and cover. Therefore, is it denying a goal-scoring opportunity? But ultimately, you've got two really, really similar situations that have been dealt with in completely different ways. In one instance, the guy tucked away at Stockley Park has decided that, uh, i got to get involved here. I don't like the look of this. I've got to get involved here. I've got to tell him that it's the denial of a clear goal-scoring opportunity. I've got to step in on the referee here and let him know that he's got something wrong so that he goes and has a look with a different view in his mind, with a different message in his mind, with a different idea of what's unfolded in his mind. And then he ultimately goes and takes completely different action. But in the Liverpool-Chelsea scenario, the VAR's gone, nah, it's all right, mate. All good. Yellow card's fine. Sufficient. And listen, I don't have a problem with that being given either way. Like, I said it on the main pod when we talked about the Arsenal game. I don't have a massive problem with Saliba being sent off. At least I didn't have a massive problem with, with Saliba being sent off because I think if you're going to pull up those types of fouls, last man and all of that, then fine, show the red card. But you got to do it consistently. And to watch the very next day when all of these um, officials that were involved in today's Liverpool-Chelsea game would have been well aware of what happened down at the Vitality yesterday, act in a completely different way, um, address the situation in a totally different way, creates inconsistency and frustration. And you wonder why, you wonder why supporters and football fans who are often labelled immature, um, too tribal, etc. You wonder why these people take to social media and criticise the way that they do. Well, this is why. Because they're seeing nonsense like this every week, a lack of consistency. 
in the space of the day. That's what we get in this league right now. That's why people are finding it so difficult to stay on board with it. It's why people are saying that they're losing interest in it. It's why people are getting incredibly frustrated. So, yeah, sort it out, guys. A bit of consistency. That's all we're asking for. That's all we're asking for. I'll finish up by uh, just touching on the league table again, because as I mentioned, it's not looking great for Arsenal to be four points off the pace after just eight games. It's not great. Um, it's really disappointing, in fact. And um, I'm hoping that we can get back to winning ways on Tuesday night against Shakhtar Donetsk. Um, and then obviously we've got that big game coming up against Liverpool. Look, if we beat Liverpool next week and you turn that four-point lead that they have over us to a one-point lead, then all, all of a sudden the outlook looks very, very different. It could be uh, a great weekend for Manchester City if they can win their game. But things can turn and things can change. But if anybody's telling you you're being overly negative... Um, then stop, pause and think about what it is exactly you're saying. Because there are some overly negative opinions and views out there. I do believe that just based on what I've seen scrolling through social media over the last 24 hours. But equally, as an Arsenal fan, you are entitled to feel really deflated after what you watched at the weekend, which was a really poor performance, a result that ultimately I believe was coming when you think about how we've played in recent weeks. And yeah, um, you know, we're... <laughs> We're off the pace as a result of it. And we've got to claw that back and we've got to make that back up. And it's going to be interesting to see what Mikel does with the team uh, over the course of the next week with some big games to come. But yeah, um, it's OK to feel deflated. It's OK to feel down as a gooner. But we got to, um, you know, we got to pick ourselves up and go again. And listen, this is not me. Uh, when I talk about these decisions, I'm not having a go at, uh, at Manchester City per se. I'm not having a go at Wolves. I think Wolves... Um, will feel really down in the dumps because it's not the first time that they've had these things go against them. They are the club as well, aren't they, that wanted VAR scrapped. It's come back to bite them in the backside again because the on-field decision was offside. VAR stepped in and overturned it. Then you got this Tosin situation against Liverpool, which was very, very similar to the William Saliba one. Completely different course of action was taken. That's why people are frustrated. And you have a look at the two situations in comparison here. And there's not an awful lot of difference between them. So again, you can understand why people are feeling frustrated and down in the dumps about it all. But hey, um, hope you enjoyed uh, the ep this first episode of Harry Reacts. Um, I'm sure when there isn't loads of controversy... It might happen one day. Uh, we'll focus more so on the specific games that we're focusing on, but I just wanted to react to today's football in general and some of the inconsistencies that once again have reared their ugly heads. Spoiling the Premier League, you know, best league in the world, but you're spoiling it, guys. Sort it out. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all the rest of it. If you're listening on audio, leave us a review. And we shall be back on Monday evening slash Tuesday morning with another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna podcast. Until then, take care. Goodbye.